Happy Monday, YouTube friends and family, and happy Dr. Martin Luther King Day to everybody here watching. Now, I have to say that this is probably going to be one of the toughest lists that I've ever done. This is a list on the top fragrances for dressing up or dress up occasions. And it was very difficult just because there's so many fragrances from each house that definitely fit this category. So I really had to go and grab the first fragrances that came to mind, uh, my gut instinct, first impressions. And for me, that's just the most genuine way to do it. I didn't want to overthink it. I didn't want to grab like six fragrances from each house and have 20 fragrances on here. So let's keep it short and let's go over these. So the house of Zerzhov was very difficult. I don't own full bottles of either of these two fragrances, uh, but we have Udin and Luxor. And to me, from the samples that I've tried, uh, Udin and Luxor are the two top fragrances for dressing up. Now, again, there's a lot that fits this category. You've got Alexandria the Second, you've got Ether, I mean, you have Naxos and Forty Knots that are both very versatile fragrances that would definitely do well dressing up. But the uh, richness of Udin with the rum notes and some of the florals in there, a little bit of musk, I believe, at the base note. Udin is one of my favorite fragrances from the House of Zhirzhov. It is also a perfume concentration. And that goes with Luxor as well. Luxor is a perfume concentration. Much different vibes than uh, Udin, though. Luxor, it's grown on me, man. I liked it when I first tried it. I wasn't sure if I was really going to have a place in my collection for it because it is a tobacco fragrance. I have quite a few of those. But I will be looking at buying a bottle of this soon. Uh, this 25% oil concentration has 75% volume for the, the water and alcohol in there. So 25% oil concentration. And it's very spicy, tobacco heavy. It's got a lot of cinnamon, cardamom, tobacco. And it even has two different types of oud along with patchouli at the base. So Luxor and Oudin for me from the House of Zhirzhov. They absolutely fit that bill in terms of being dressed up and wearing them for a dress-up occasion. But I'm just starting to get more into the house of Zhirzhov. So anybody who's very experienced with that house, I would love to hear your comments and opinions on uh, some of your favorite dress-up fragrances from the house of Zhirzhov. But those are the you know, first two that came to mind uh, after trying samples. So now this probably not going to be very controversial or a surprise to anybody who loves a mouage. Overture Man is definitely one of those fragrances. You got the cardamom. I don't know if it has cardamom, but it smells like it does. But it has grapefruit, citrus, cognac vibes in there. Beautiful stuff. It's got some of the base notes that you would expect in a mouage. I believe it's got frankincense. It's got some woods in there. But for me, that's really the star of the show is the citrus, the grapefruit, and that kind of cognac accord. It makes it smell really proper. Definitely suited for dressing up. Maybe not uh, necessarily something that you have to wear like a suit and tie with, but man, Overture, when you're going on a date or you're dressing up for an event, that's definitely one of the first fragrances from the entire house of Mouage that came to mind. Uh, of course, a Mouage was a tough house to do because Jubilation 25 would have fit very well in there. Uh, Memoir, Beloved. Journeyman. There's just, again, that's why this list was so tough to do because there's so many from each house uh, that fit the bill. And I'll kind of give some of those honorable mentions as we move along just so they're not excluded. But again, I just want to choose a couple fragrances from each house uh, that really first came to mind when I did this video. So another one, Epic. It's got a nice berry incense in there. It's got a lot of spices. It's got oud and musks in there as well. Man, this fragrance, it's just, it's one of the most complex of the entire house of Amouage. It's got really good long-lasting power. Very developmental. Almost reminds you of like a little bit of a blue-green kind of fragrance at the opening. And then it dries down into a little bit more spicy, a little bit more bass-heavy. Kind of that typical Amouage scent profile, which I love about it. And Epic Man, it really is just a very proper fragrance. Very well, again, goes well dressing up or... Any type of events that you're going to be, you know, attending business meetings would be another occasion. But Epic Man is just one of my favorite ones from the House of Amouage. So these two were the first that came to mind. But again, lots of stuff that could have gone in there. I love Silver Oud. Um, it's just tough to say with the House of Amouage because there is so many things that could have been put in there. And this is kind of true with all these. So Bond number nine, again, one of my favorites, Riverside Drive. 
This is always gonna be one of my favorites from the house. I have the old bottle as well. It's about half full, very yellow. It's almost 20 years old. And one thing I love about this fragrance is it does have a nice kind of aquatic vibe with the rose and the pineapple and the lily of the valley. And it's also got a little bit of a green note in there because it's got basil and oak moss and patchouli. So very well balanced, not too floral, not too aquatic. It's nice because it does give you kind of like those blue fragrance vibes, but it's a lot deeper and more complex than that. Very fresh as well, but it's also extremely long lasting. So Riverside Drive, at least for me, uh, traditionally for date nights, especially when I started first getting into Bond Number no. 9 and the higher end niche perfumes in general, Riverside was always one of my favorites and it's remained that way for, you know, 20 years forward now. It's nothing's changed with that. So it's really good for a fragrance for that. It can be consistent. The new release is very, very good, very close to the old one. I've always said the old one has a little bit more of an oak moss note to it, but maybe that's just because of the age and how it has aged. And the newer one has a little bit better, more fresh kind of a aquatic and pineapple note to it. So extremely similar, beautiful fragrances. Um, I don't think you can really find the old one anymore unless it's from a secondhand seller and those prices were up in the $700 range. So. Just get the new one. It's beautiful. Just as good as the original, in my opinion. I'm, you know, one of those people who's just obsessed with Riverside Drive. So, um, Bond number nine, Dubai Gold, as you would expect from the bottle in the Dubai series, just the name and the way the bottle looks, it fits. But kind of similar to Overture Man, not in terms of necessarily how it smells. Now, it does share a brandy cognac accord. But this has a much, much more rich opening, in my opinion. It's got like a raspberry, uh, ginger, blood orange, and saffron note to it. A little bit less animalic, and it's cleaner on the dry down, as opposed to Overture as well. This is a lot more musk and wood heavy, where this is a little bit more slightly animalic leather. It's got frankincense, and again, some of the stuff that you would expect from a wash in there. But Dubai Gold, it really just smells like a rich, luxurious, um, you know, dress up fragrance. It's definitely a statement fragrance. And again, from bond number nine, it was very tough because I wanted to put signature scent in there, Saks Fifth Avenue for him. You could have put Sutton Place, Lafayette Street, Cooper Square, which is no longer made anymore, uh, Dubai Jade, Dubai Amber. I mean, there is just a ton that could have gone in this list from bond number nine. So I really just wanted to pick the first two that came to mind, to keep it as genuine as possible. And Riverside Drive and, and Bond Number no. 9 Dubai Gold were those two fragrances. So now from the House of Creed, this was another tough one, but Original Santal has always been one of my favorites for that occasion. Just as good, if not better, than it was 15 years ago or so when I bought it, maybe even longer than that. Don't have much less uh, left. They don't really have them in the four ounce bottles anymore. So I'm just gonna kind of treasure that as well. But there is again. A lot of stuff from Creed that could have been put in this list. Uh, Royal Oud would be one of my favorite choices as well. And even, um, I would say, Mill Sleem Imperial or Spice and Woods would be another, you know, couple good options that you could throw in there from the House of Creed. Just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, original Santel, it's, it's got like a cinnamon, juniper, tonka bean, vanilla, slightly gourmand, slightly spicy, it's just a wonderful fragrance. I really love the original, original Santel. And I think I may do a video soon where I buy a new sample of it and compare it to the old one. Um, let me know if you're interested in that. But I personally, I would like to see if it's changed at all in the years since they switched to the 3.3 ounce bottles from the four ounce. Um, so that would be a cool experiment to do. So let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see that. And now we have one of my favorite houses, the House of Argos. And there's two fragrances that I left off this list that do belong on this list. I just did a video on them. And I would say those are more situational for certain dress up occasions. Triumph of Bacchus and Neiman Lion would certainly fit that. In fact, I even brought uh, Triumph of Bacchus. So if you're going out for cigars or something and you're dressing up, Triumph of Bacchus 100% tobacco fragrance <clears throat> would be a great one. Just like Royal Tobacco for a Moage would be a very good fragrance. I left it out because in my opinion, these two are a little bit more versatile and they could definitely fit into any kind of dress up occasion or scenario. So let's just go ahead and start Fall of Phaeton. I'm wearing it now. 
sprayed it on this morning and man this fragrance is really it just throws me for a trip every single time because you have a bright lively opening where you have i believe it's ginger cardamom some citrus notes makes it very lively then it kind of goes more dark and mysterious you've got agar wood you even have some um, leather and musk at the base along with tonka and vanilla and it gives it a very slight touch of some richness and also gourmand qualities with that tonka and vanilla so it's just very well balanced, very proper smelling, very luxurious smelling. And Fall of Phaeton is one of my personal favorite fragrances from the House of Argos. If anyone watched my video on the top 10, it did make my number one over Triumph of Bacchus, which I didn't think anything new from them would unseat it, but they've done a very good job with their recent release fragrances, Birth of Venus, Love Triumphs Over War, and of course, Fall of Phaeton. So one that may not get a ton of love from the House of Argos. I didn't have it very high up in my top 10, but this is always growing on me, which is Baccio Immortale. And the reason this makes such a great dress up fragrance in my opinion, very heavy, heavy dose of leather in here. It's a nice, clean, classy, proper leather, raspberry in there. But one of my favorite things is the dry down. It's got musk and oud as well. Gives it a very nice, long-lasting, slightly outdoor um, kind of vibe to it. But it's a very well-blended fragrance. It's not something that, you know, yes, the first 30 minutes to an hour, you really get overdosed on that leather and raspberry, and it seems it's all you can smell. But especially when you wear this on skin after about two to three hours, you really start smelling the oud and the musk and the woods kind of coming out in here. And... For that reason, I think it's one of the best dress-up fragrances from the House of Argos. It's something that it's easy to grab and go as well, just because it's such a nice leather and raspberry fragrance, but it's got a lot of depth to it. Again, very well blended, very proper fragrance, and just the leather note in general in there, it just smells expensive, and it smells like something that you would want to wear, you know, when you're dressing up nice in a suit and tie or a nice collared shirt and you're going for a nice evening out. Um, Baccio Immortale is that fragrance. So again, ton of stuff I could have put on from the House of Argos. Triumph of Bacchus, uh, Neiman Lion would maybe be if you're dressing up and you're going on a date and you want to set like a masculine presence in the room. Uh, Neiman Lion would be a wonderful choice for that. Again, this, it's very hard to choose because you could take a lot of fragrances and kind of input it into this category, but I just wanted to be genuine and kind of grab the first ones that came to mind and not really overthink it too much because I would have probably just grabbed like seven or eight fragrances from each house and this video would have been like 45 minutes long. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know some of your top dress up fragrances from these houses. Um, again, Jerzhoff, I don't have as much experience with some of these other houses. So I'd be really interested uh, mainly in hearing kind of what you guys think from the house of Jerzhoff and what fits that category. So hopefully I'll be seeing y'all soon. Have a great day, all right? Bye.